February, close to Valentine's Day. Close. That's right. I'm Vicki Hoff. I'm Marie Eldridge. And today we're going to talk to you about vintage quilts. So this webinar is being recorded and you'll find it on the education tab um, probably later this afternoon. Uh, make sure your speakers are on and let's get rolling. So if you can't hear us, then check your speakers. <laughs> All right, this is what you would have received as an email. So uh, check your time for the area you're that you're the area that you're at so that make sure that where are you're in the right area. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so again, I'm Vicki and Marie. We're joined here every day. We're happy to um, talk about vintage quilts. First thing, one thing that we definitely want to um, remind you of is if you ever need any handy quiver supplies, fabrics or supplies to go to our this link here and you'll be able to find the retailer that's closest to you and find all sorts of treasures there. Right, let's talk about the vintage quilts. So we have um, Brenda here at Handy Quilter. She's our director of marketing and education. She has just loved purchasing vintage antique quilts that uh, may have some issues, but she buys them through different sources. And uh, I think we've gotten a real attachment to those, especially since, well, since we, we have the ones <laughs> quilted in the studio. That's right. We have yeah. a whole gallery full of mm -hmm. these quilts that have been quilted, vintage quilts, but we quilted them. The, the challenge was to maybe quilt them more of a modern way or mm -hmm. a current trend. trend. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And so, but all of these quilts had issues. A lot of them were hand pieced and not necessarily very accurate in their piecing. Yeah. We had stains, holes, irregular blocks. Some, some of them had been washed. So as a quilt top, when you wash that, then you start getting those threads, those stray threads on mm -hmm. the back. That had to be taken care of. And yeah. a lot of them were such fine, thin, old fabrics yeah. that they were real delicate. Yeah. And a lot of fullness, wavy borders. Maybe that's why they didn't get quilted the first time around. True, <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah. So maybe some beginners and they're quilting and they were put away in a trunk or a cedar chest and, and someone found them and, and sold them to Brenda. <laughs> So, but we are lucky ones because we have some beautiful, beautiful quilts. But you can see, it, like this picture here, it was quilted by Sarah Watts from our Handy Quilter marketing team, and she found this was an issue that had lots of tucks, and we'll talk about that later. But how do we take care of these quilts? Do we see the stains? Do we throw them in the washer and wash them and hope that the stains are going to come out? You know. Our, we found the challenge with us, we decided to not wash the stains out. We quilted the quilt. And I know your quilt, one of the quilts that we were looking at that we filmed for this, I didn't even know there were stains on it until we started looking really close because the quilting took over. Right. It was the and, main event. Yeah. So it kind of, you love the quilt. And so those kind of little imperfections, it's okay if there is. Yeah. Now, if you want this quilt to be authentic for the era that it was, uh, you know, pieced in, then you may want to do hand piecing. But we are hand a long quilting. hand and Yeah, that too. Yeah, hand quilting. <laughs> but we are a long arm company, and we like those machines. So all of these quilts were machine quilted. Long and they're arm gorgeous. Quilted. They are so. gorgeous. So let's go and let's see what we have here for you today. So this is the quilt that I got the opportunity. And I have to say, when I first saw it, I was not so excited. It was not, everything was a little irregular. There's yeah, not, the piecing's not real accurate. I, I, I almost wondered if two different people did the piecing or, uh, you know, whatever. The because, applique, because that's well, really all this is, is an Yeah, applique. and maybe, you know, they got better as they went or they did, you know, but so, uh, I was not totally in love with the project to start with, oh, but, but I, I love now it's done. So 
you know, one tip that I would say is to not be too concerned about the imperfections and to just go for it. And I, I love this quilt. It's really it's um, beautiful. So let's get a close up. Huh? And you can see how there were stains on this quilt. Did you have holes in yours? I did. I had some little holes and I did not try to, you know, as much as I could, you know, you kind of quilt those areas, but I just quilted this quilt. And okay, we, we've got a video coming of showing this up close and some things. So we're going to kind of go through these right now and then we'll go on to our video. But the next one is the quilt that I got to quilt. Now, Grandmother's Flower Garden is always hand pieced and, and it's typically always hand quilted yeah. but you're a long arm company <laughs> and so <laughs> I machine quilted this I don't know if I've ever seen anyone do a machine quilting on one of these but I machine quilted it and you can see how I chose to interpret you know to do the quilting on it and there were a lot of issues that you just tackled. I mean, you can imagine there was a lot of stretch and pulling and, you know, I think it actually helped to have it on the longer machine yes. so you could pull it straight. So that and, it made it really square and yeah. flat. Yeah. And that's my end goal and, and, you know, is to have a square quilt come out there. So it was fun. The one thing is, is that I made sure that I did, I quilted this continuously. So the framing that I did around that diamond I from there I went out and I quilted that little flower in the center and and I just made it continuous all the way through so I didn't have to stop and start it would have taken me forever because this took me about a day <laughs> one whole day one whole day <laughs> but I it, it was beautiful and I'm glad to say it's mine okay the next one is Mary Beth crap crapel <laughs> sorry Mary Beth <laughs> Okay, so Mary Beth quilted this quilt and this was hand pieced, but she sort of ignored that piecing because it was not so straight. She made it look straight by her quilting. So she went right outside that block and made that star bigger. Okay, next one is Amy Van Gerp. This one, oh, she worked so hard on this. She had, un, had to unseam, she said, and restitch, and because there was so much fullness. and. These quilts have a tendency to have a lot of fullness in the very center of that star. And it did. It did have oh, a lot of fullness. Yeah. But it's beautiful. And what she did was she just quilted it to death. Yeah. We and saw by, this one and we were like, ah, oh, not doing that one. <laughs> by quilting it and adding so much quilting to it and, and <laughs> circular quilting and dividing and she totally tamed that quilt. She did, and it's treasure. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. I love to look at it. It's beautiful. This was done by Kathy Zimmerman, who is one of our employees, and she totally tackled the problem here. Those look so even as you look at that, just like <laughs> that, which this was not the case. But I think that's one of the things that you learn from this is to go ahead and tackle it. And I think once you quilt it, you can get rid of a multitude of sins, maybe? Yeah, so she, her design mimicked the whole triangle, effect, you know, piecing as far as the big, the, the design itself. She quilted, she didn't really uh, stay with the piecing of the blocks in most of the blocks because it was so irregular. It was so uh, missing points on some triangles. So she just kind of went outside of the box and created something big, a big diamond. So we are used to symmetrical, nice, even piecing. One of the things that you kind of have to be open to is hand beads. That's and, right. And I think that happened in a lot of these quilts. Yeah, and they admitted that, that in their quilting, they had, they looked at it and that first initial, I can do it this way. And when you get to looking actually at the quilt and seeing the irregularities, the imperfections, then there, <laughs> many of them had a plan B because it just wasn't going to yeah, work. Yeah. Many of them have a lot of unpicking moments too. <laughs> so a lot of these, I, I didn't say this, but for all of these are quilted by employees of Honey Quilter, whether they are our, uh, field educators that are out around the country or whether they're employees in house at Honey Quilter here in Salt Lake. And so we've all got to kind of converse with each other and, but 
when they went out to their homes in all over the United States, yeah. then they were on their own. But us here, we guys got to talk to each other a little bit, but they were on their own. They got to decide. And the one thing that we were kind of told not to do is not to wash it because the stains probably, they were such an old quilts that they would not come out and we still wanted to retain the quilt. You know? Right, so you might sacrifice the whole quilt trying to just save a little. But if you put incredible quilting in it, it hides a lot of imperfections. Yeah, that's what you look at. Right. This is Debbie Brown. She's one of our other educators from New York and she loved, I love the colors of this. It's such a happy quilt. It's beautiful. Happy quilt, yeah, but yeah. she, and she had fun. But she ended up doing plan B because it didn't work for her. And so you can see the centers of the flowers were so full that you can see the hopping foot. You can't even see the, the hopping foot because of the fullness. And so she tamed that center with just pebbles and just circular pebbles. So that's one thing you know is that circular stitching will kind of pull that fullness and put it down and kind of handle it. That's right. And the other thing that I love about her quilt is this is sashing going throughout, you know, those blocks. She actually created a block with her quilting of that sashing, which I, I really like the way she did that. So yeah. it's not any of the piecing as far as that's a block, but it was her quilting that created that block. Yeah. If I did that out. And then this is Diane Henry. Oh, I love looking at this quilt. It is just like she says, it's a quilt set. It's just the movement, it's grace and peaceful. It's very peaceful. And it's like the colors too, you know, just yeah. soothing it's a colors. Really popular color right now. Yeah. So looking at that, that's all hand applique. So as we look up close, she took those leaves. Those petals is falling down. <laughs> And just mimic throughout the whole thing. Okay, so yeah, does it sound peaceful? It sounds peaceful, <laughs> but I remember looking at this quilt top and those borders were wavy. They were probably one and a half times as long as that quilt. They so were... I think she had to work with those borders. And you can see how tight her pebble quilting is throughout this. On the wave on the borders, there are seams. Those borders had seams. And she ignored those seams and created a wavy border. And she added some tight quilting to draw that in and make that managed it. And it's yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, she did a great job. This is one done by Elaine Gilmore. And once again, lots of issues. This is one that you would see um, some different colors in the fabric, which I think is kind of typical when so you different get it, white shades. Different white shades, yes. And in an overall look, it doesn't, you know. It's a nice quilt. It's still beautiful. And rather than accentuate that, she just, you know, quilted it. And I love how she divided this up. We're going to show you the block, how she did that. Yeah, it had lots of stains and holes. And the fabric, some fabric was like gauze and others was uh, more of a muslin. And yeah. so there were different fabrics in this. I wondered if it was to be washed, it, it would just fall apart. Yeah, come out and shreds. So there's the different blocks that I was mentioning. As you can see by her quilting, how she divided it different and, you know, used those melon shapes. And so it's really only two blocks, a white block and then this other block on point. And yet she took both of the blocks and made this big motif that I really like. Okay, Harriet Carpanini, and I took this at an angle because I just wanted you to see the quilting on it. These are um, nine different blocks, and rather than piecing or quilting the pieces in the block, she quilted the block, one motif over the whole thing, which really, and the reason is because the piecing was irregular. And so she handled it as a huge block and put a beautiful motif in it with a lot of micro quilting. And it turned out beautiful. And they're just shirting fabrics. So yeah. they tend to not be too stiff or yeah. you know, hold their shape too well. And this turned out gorgeous. Added a lot of pebbles to that too.
This is Carrie Rollins. She's one of our educators. And this quilt is uh, not your grandmother's doily. It's not what she calls yes. it, something like that. Yes. And it's beautiful the way she just, rather than pay attention to the piecing, even the blocks, she set a, a motif on the center of it and just quilted that. Two different motifs, and yet, and I love the way she enlarged that motif in the dress and plate to make it look like a doily. Yeah. All right. The next is Linda Mattioti. <clears throat> Excuse me. Linda and I fought over this one. <laughs> Linda won. <laughs> she's, she's, you couldn't take her? I know, she's so short. <laughs> Sorry, Linda. But <laughs> uh, she won on this one. And so uh, I love the two color, just the two color on it. Yeah. And but she took this and she took on one of the borders off and then took one whole row of piecing off and then put the border back on. And this didn't have the scallop border. It was a straight square border. And so she added, you know, the scallop, but she just did thread color, uh, white thread and monofilament thread. And you can see where the white, I'm just going to move my pencil up there. You can see this is white thread here going through the blue, but it's beautiful. The motifs that she chose, she did all of this in art and stitch and then took it over and, and quilted it. And the one thing that I found very, very interesting with hers is um, it's just a solid blue. And she thought, oh, it'll be easy to match up for binding. It wasn't. So what she did is she added that white piping on there, which divided it and it deceives your eye because it, it looks like the same color and a tip from her is she you want to definitely uh prepare the quilt before you put it on because hers had a lot of thread shadowing through she didn't do that so she put it on and then quilted it and then she's finding all these blue little threads from the fabric shadowing through and had to do some work with it afterwards she says prepare that before so that you don't have that issue after and i think all of our um, quilters tried pressing and trimming threads and Start just like you would with a quilt top that you finished and you're sending it to the quilter you want to give it that same attention okay sarah watts she is our i mentioned earlier she's in our marketing department and this was one that she tried as hard as she could to get it regular square and had so many so much fullness in those melon shapes and she just gave up and said i'm going to quilt it and embrace it and see if i can make it work and she did it's beautiful i really like it she had a nice feather design in the nine patch and then she did some kind of some mod quilting you know with the lines and and circles, but there were many places that there were tucks. And you know, I had never seen that until I started really looking after she told me this. And there's gonna be something wrong that we have Sarah's quilt here and we're showing you what's wrong with it. I know, but but look how she quilted it beautiful. And Sarah's actually piping for us today. So she did a beautiful job with this and it turned out. Yeah, yeah. I'll take this one home, You'll even, this even with its little top. That's yeah. right. And I hope we showed the back of this. The quilting was beautiful. Yeah, I think we okay, did. so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually go to a video of each of these quilts and some more things on how they were corrected, what they did. And so we'll, we'll move on to that right now, and then we'll come back and talk about some things about those quilts. All right, let's go to our video. Our quilt now is called Supernova A or Nova. A. Nova. She's it's Amy Van Gerp <laughs> and she's from Canada, so we're not sure how she says this. But this quilt was quite a challenge for her. It was had fullness where it shouldn't have fullness, and she had to uh, unpick or she called it unseam the outside border to bring in to make it unwavy. She starched it 
I probably used a few cans of spray starch, starch it to try and get everything to recess and lay flat. And then this inside here had a real big fullness, a lot of fullness there. And so she had to reseam that, reseam the outside border. But she also quilted this to death. To death. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that it would recess that, bring that in and make it. And look how flat that lays. She did have to do some reseaming in maybe some of her points here. Uh, but the one thing that I really liked is she added a lot of micro quilting in every block in all of the white. And she took, changed the thread color. So she used the thread color matching up the thread or the fabric, but she changed this thread color in the just subtle and just quilted it to death. And it lays flat. Anything you, oh, she did add some, um, some couching on it as well. Yeah. Just to add a little I, bling. I think her circular quilting adds to that drawing it in and circular kind always of does more than down. straight yeah. line. Yeah. But she didn't do it all the same, so she kind of sectioned things off, kind of did that divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. I love it because she used two layers of batting. On this one, you're kind of like, did she really? But you can tell in here she did. <laughs> but she <laughs> quilted this down so much that you do see that channel around to divide them. So beautiful way that she did it. And it lays flat. This is Elaine Gilmore's quilt. And we don't know what she's titled it, but we titled it Blue and White. Is that good? Blue and White. Blue work? and White works for me. OK, so if you come in real close on this quilt, you'll see that there are holes in it. It's a very loose weave fabric on part on these uh, triangles here. There's holes in it. So, and there's also stains. So if we move over here, you'll see there's some stains and they're all throughout it. As I move over here, you can see quite a bit of staining here. But because this is such a loose weave fabric and, so, and it's hand piece, so it's, old I would say. Yeah. I would say that it would if we were to wash it and try to get the stains out we may mo get more holes it might disintegrate. We don't want yeah. that. Yeah. And so she just chose to quilt it like it is. And so Marie do you want to talk about the, uh, the quilting part of it? So the quilting what I like is that you have this channel that she created and then she put a motif inside of it but she didn't take that motif all the way to the edge. She left it and left a little channel that kind of goes around it that gives that space and a little definition to the curve. Well, the nice thing is this is a curve and this design is actually triangular, so it's more straight. Yeah. So it gave that. Yeah. The one thing that I see is this block is a block on point and this is the block and then this is the other block. But she treated this. Yeah, yeah. She flowed into this block and this is really to me the focal point of this quilt and you will notice that like here she's got a different color of fabric than she does here and it just adds to the yeah. personality of the quilt so the just, antiqueness yeah, of it? yeah yeah you're not going to change it but it's beautiful how it yeah so chose beautiful binding that just accented it and it's a beautiful quilt this quilt was quilted by Mary Beth Crapel, and it is called Sunshine Stars. And I love how she broke this up. This was hand pieced, so hand stitched, and they are not square. They're not even straight. Applique on here, which it by the applique kind of created a little puff in it. Mary Beth did use two layers of batting. She used a Hob 8020 and a wool. And so that created that nice puff, but some of them have more puff. See, more and I think like Pupanto. this one, you can kind of see that it's kind of, you know, that's really a lot. So by not quilting that down, she was able to handle that different. And you know, as we were looking at this earlier, we <laughs> looked at this very one and we're like, oh my goodness, there's some stain. And we didn't see this because the quilt was so beautiful overall that we didn't see. And it, then we started looking and we did find some stains. So sometimes we have to be really careful on treating 
you know, washing because we don't know what condition the fabric is in. So by treating one area, you might mess up the rest of it. So. And we, yeah, you don't know how, <clears throat> the color fast of the fabrics. So, And one thing that I just love about this is she found a backing and binding that to me, I thought it was the very same fabric. So you can see right here the binding and if you look close, you can see, no, they're not. But overall, it looks like it. And then the backing is that same, is that same fabric. And we'll put that against it. And they're not the same, but it, she did a really good job of matching that up. So I think by disguising or by binding it alternate ways to uh, accentuate the block rather than right on the seam, then you don't see all those crooked seams. Yeah, so her star, she actually took that star out because not all of the piecing is accurate. Some of it has points missing and some of it has too much of the point. And so she took that points out, created another boundary around yeah, it. Yeah, so here's this block where the seam is really here. And, yeah. you know, it's hand-pieced, so it's not you know, to me, I thought hand piecing would be more accurate, but on a lot of the quilts that we're seeing, they're not as accurate. But Mary Beth did a great job yeah, it's of quilting this and making it just beautiful. <laughs> this quilt was done by one of Marie's favorite quilters. My BFF. <laughs> this quilt was done by me. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my favorite things about this is that you just did a channel in between here, a straight line, it's surrounded by curves. Okay, wait, let's step back here. This is a grandmother's flower garden, and so the name of this is called Not My Grandmother's Flower Garden. Normally, a grandmother's flower garden is, is all, well, a grandmother's flower garden is always hand-pieced. I haven't seen one not, because it's all oh. these little hexes here. So it's all hand-pieced. And normally it's always hand quilted. Well, we didn't hand quilt it because we're machine quilters. We're long arm machine quilters. And so I went through here and added all these curls and I wanted it to be continuous con without having yeah, to break yeah. my thread. I, cho I chose the same thread color. And so I would curl through here all the way through. But then as I would get to a point, I would actually travel in and create the straight line. And as I'm creating the straight line, right here, I would travel in here and I would make a motif inside here, travel back out, there is my travel up here. And so I tried to make this as continuous without, because if you look at it, there's a lot of these motifs. I didn't even do the math, but there's a lot here that I would have been cutting my thread to create all of this. So as we turn this over, you can actually see the travel path as it travels through, creates the motif and goes out and it was continuous. It made it a really fun design on the back, doesn't it? It is. Yeah. I love the colors, all the colors. So how did you decide what to bind it with? A neutral, <laughs> and a green is a neutral. So I bound it with the same fabric that I uh, placed on the back. And the green, there's a lot of greens in there, but it's just a nice soft green, kind of a blue green, because there's blue and, you know, it was so fun to do. And I'm so glad to say that it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so what things did you change on this quilt? Because well, I had to cut off some of these edges out here because the triangle went out here and I was not going to do that type, so I squared it up. Yeah. I did have to add a little tension on the machine to make sure it laid straight. It was pretty straight, but I did have but to... But I think you had fullness and I think the way you quilted it handled the fullness. Yeah. yeah. And it lays really flat. It's really nice. We did lay it on the floor and spray it a little bit, as, you know, but not much. Yeah. So to block it. We to blocked block it. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's kind of nice to say that it's mine. <laughs> oh, I wish it was mine. This quilt is something old, is new again. It was done by Harriet Carpenini. Carpenini. 
and she basically put one big motif over each square so that kind of hides the different variations in whether the piecing is square or not square. She also used the same color thread throughout and so she does have some high contrast in her fabrics but she used that white thread throughout so you're not seeing as much as of the motif as you might would like to. Each motif is different. She pebbled through here but let's show you some of those motifs on the back. So each one of the nine blocks has a different motif. Beautiful the way it's pieced. And with the two layers of batting, it just gave it a really loft here, a little trapunto look without having to trapunto because she used a lot of high density quilting yep. in to make that stand out. Yep. This quilt was done by Debbie Brown. It's called Kansas in August. Love this quilt. This is a happy it? quilt. Yeah. yeah, this is a great, well, August great is a happy colors. Month, isn't it? Oh, yeah, <laughs> love the colors. And at first I thought, are those seeds in the sunflowers? But that's just part of the fabric. The print. So Smart Debbie, she added the binding that matches that little green that's in there. So reds and yellows are kind of hard to match when you're trying to match colors. So one thing about this was Debbie said she had a plan of how she wanted to quilt this. But once she started at it, it didn't work. It, you, some, you have to be open to that change to be able to tackle the problems that you will come up with. So the problem that she came up with most was all of these circles here were just really full. This is um, pieced, machine pieced. All of this is machine pieced, which I'd I, like to I, figure yeah, that I one out. How they did. Okay, so it's machine pieced, and but this part here was just really full and so to get take that fullness out we know that if you add a lot of quilting you take that fullness out and circle quilting and helps circles do, do it, it more yeah. so there are some tucks still in this because there was so much fullness <laughs> but she really it lays flat she got that fullness out and then she did her her uh, ribbon candy around here this is something that Debbie loves to do and does a fantastic job of it and she created rather than see you've got the the motion of the quilt going this way but she actually broke that up and created blocks here with the channel quilting, with the quilting which yeah. I thought was really fun to do so another thing is she just did a curved line around here and then filled it in with feathers so that's another thing with the curves to handle the fullness that you're gonna find and left all of these triangles and these squares unquilted so it kind of stood up and, and had a little bit of a trapunto effect because she added two layers of batting. So beautiful quilt and that green binding that she matched up with this green square right here, that little green square right there. That's where she finally went to because she couldn't find a red or a yellow to match. So she matched it up and it works great with that green binding. This quilt was done by Diane Henry. It's called Laurel's Garden Party, and it is just peaceful. It is. It's I just, love looking at it. Yeah, it's just, the colors, everything is just nice. I love how she left these pieces not quilted. Well, so she mimicked the leaves, the, the petals here. Yeah, 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 yeah it's just so Just floating, nice. falling. So these borders were terribly wavy, big wavy borders. And she controlled those. And then, rather than have this one straight pieced border, she did this little channel of quilting along here and then interrupted it this way into the pebbled quilting. So it's beautiful. So with the wavy border that she had, by adding some uh, smaller micro quilting in it, it helped draw that in so that it laid flat. And that's, that's the hardest part of some of these quilts that come that have been sitting in boxes or that have been pieced, yeah. is that they don't necessarily lay flat. They, you know, they didn't have a... But a lot of quilting in. controls all of that. Yeah, so, so micro quilting throughout it lays flat. It, that lets these flowers pop or the leaves pop out. And it's just, it is, it's a peaceful garden party. <laughs> this is my quilt that I did. And who are you? 
Uh, Marie Eldridge. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Holiday Heritage. And this <laughs> had the, the same thing. Tackle all of those loose spots with lots and lots of quilting. Was so, it like uneven, like fullness in some Fullness in some places. This is a hand applique, but I think somebody different did each quarter because they're very different in size. They are not at all symmetrical. And so as I started to quilt the design, I was like, ah, that's not gonna work. So very asymmetrical in how I handled it to kind of take away from that. And yet the center has a symmetrical to kind of balance that and make it kind of trick your eye into looking twice and thinking, oh, yeah, that looks so this good. is symmetrical. And you also created that again underneath as it goes. And then I noticed here you were talking about this, that that's not even all the way around. This goes out here and that's, you know, that's not even. So how did you decide how to do it? I just started that channel and as I got to each quadrant, then I just figured out how it would work with the piecing or the applique is actually what this is. So, and then the applique, they wait, always- Wait, wait, I wanna go what, back what, to what? that. I wanna go back to that. So one thing that you said <clears throat> that you didn't do, that you wish you'd, if you were to do this again, because I asked Marie, if you were to do this again, what would you do differently? I would have marked, especially the big so you Square didn't mark it. Point. You put it on and then create it as you went. Is that Started the way you go. did? That's how I whirl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so and then I just kind of let it talk to me how it wants to be quilted, and then, right? So what did you so, use here to get these waves? So these are actually our wave rulers, which these this channel stays the same size, and then this one kind of spokes out, takes a little width, and they're very controlled here. Just the two designs, but then out in here, there are a lot of different designs. My favorite are the designs that are on top of the applique, because I use the same color of thread out here as on the green and on the red, which is kind of a little darker thread. I think it kind of gives it an antique kind of so feel it, to it. So these are all solid fabrics with no print in them. So by you adding this different thread color, it actually gives it like a print. It does. Which I think, yeah. I love, I love. You know, and people say, oh, you're not supposed to quilt over the applique, but I think what you did here, you gave it a channel here so that it, you know, gave it a nice, it stood out, and I think it's beautiful. But, you know, something, I know me. you're going to say there's a stain. <laughs> there's, well, there's more than one stain. As I have really, really looked in on this quilt, I, am, I saw some stains because I'm just analyzing her, her quilting. Did you try to take the stains out? No. I did not it? want to jeopardize this quilt top at all or take a chance of it's anything coming old. undone or whatever. So a lot of it, you know, is hand-stitched. So there's a stain so. here with a water stain and you just left it and you really don't even see that. There's a stain over here that has a water stain around it, but it's like it adds to the It kind of does, you know, it's what you got and it's like. So let's just turn it over so you can see all the quilting that's in there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, Marie. You did a great oh, job of quilting you. this. Lots of fun. Yeah. All right. This is Grandmother's Doilies from Carrie Rollins, and I think she did an amazing job of creating a doily effect around this Dresden plate. Isn't that pretty beautiful? It is. I love how this quilts and just looks like a doily. It does. So she used two blocks, the doily itself, and then here's the other motif that she put in here. So she kind of ignored the piecing and then just added this block here with framing that and the doily itself. And it's just beautiful. It is. That's a great tip for just a regular quilt. And she I used think. the same color thread even though it went through this dark green and the red. Very same color thread in this motif as she did in the doily itself. Turned out nice. Now Let's turn it over again so you can see how beautiful, beautiful. 
Nice design. This one is called Diamonds in the Rough. It was quilted by Kathy Zimmerman, one of our employees here, and she did an incredible job with what she had to work with. And sometimes I think you get a little off track with, she tried to tackle a big part of this. And so let's see the diamond. There's a diamond. Let's see goes down how there. big that is. And that's too Here's a much diamond. to handle. And it has some stains in it that she just left that that's part of the beauty of the quilt so she also has a small diamond here that she accented and, and one by Vicki so. so her comment was the piecing was not straight there were points missing it just wasn't straight and she decided she before she realized that she decided she was going to quilt it using that piecing and then she got to realize that she was quilting that the lines, some of them were closer together than others because of the piecing. So she, that was a little struggle with her. So she says, I would rethink that again. And the other thing is because she was quilting this on an Avante and the Avante has a throat space, a quilting space of about 15 inches. This, she wanted to do a lot of space here. And she said, I had to adjust my frame or the fabric back and forth and back and forth to get what she wanted here as this full repeat going around so that was a struggle that she felt she says even a larger throat space the fusion or the infinity would have still struggled with this because yeah, of this it was space so light so the thing i would say is don't be discouraged if you have a quilt top or you b want to buy a quilt top and it doesn't look even because there are ways to quilt it that it still looks amazing. Yes, and so I would have never thought to quilt this the way she did. I think it's amazing. You can see a lot of texture going through here. And I don't notice the piecing that she's talking about that has your missing points. It's that overall quilting with the design. I think it worked great. And she used the same color thread throughout that's a white thread and as it went through this pink area it actually picked yep. up the pink yep. color so yeah. I think she did a beautiful job with a hard quilt <laughs> at the end she did a lot of unpicking she did a lot of unpicking to make this quilt work to try and line up the squares that's right she unpicked yeah. a lot yeah. restitched yes it was a it was a work <laughs> This quilt was quilted by Sarah Watts, and she's one of our employees at Handy Quilter, and it's called Vintage Curved Nine Patch. Now, her comments on this quilt, she said, I tried to press it to get it to lay flat, and she says, I just gave up. She says, there were so many issues with it, I didn't want to harm the fabrics, and so she quilted it, and a lot of it is done with a pro stitcher, but uh, she and a lot of, there are problems, a lot of problems as far as the piecing and the way, the fullness that she found in here. So she said, she admitted, there are a lot of tucks in this. So if we look along here, and we didn't see any tucks in this part of it, the tucks is, we saw them in the white. So I thought they were seams. And let's see if we can find one now because we were going, oh, we didn't notice those. Right, we gotta find one. So here's one There's here. <laughs> And you had one over there you were pointing out, I but have you one? were right close to it. Oh, right here. Yeah, yeah. so let's, let's come in on this one. This one, because of this fullness, and there's actually a tuck in the piecing, and she, she thought, well, do I want to take this apart and make <coughs> it work? But she didn't. She just let the fabric, this, the straight lines, there is a huge tuck right in here, which I was looking out on it, I didn't see those. And... And she said there were some places on the quilt that was not pieced at all. And so just little areas. And so she said, I just let the quilting mat it down, quilt it so that it would hold it together. So it was stitched down. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So she chose a real modern design for these light colors. Mm -hmm. And I love that she chose a color of thread that doesn't scream or take away from it. So what you really this. see when you look at it is the piecing. You see the blocks. Mm -hmm. And she did a very traditional design in here of feathers. So she matched that up. And let's just lift it so you can see, because this is beautiful. 
So she chose a backing fabric that was solid so that then she could let that backing, that design, really shine in her quilting. It's beautiful. I love it. This quilt was quilted by Linda Mattioti, and it's called Shoe Fly, which is the block gets a second chance. So the couple of things that I've noticed on this quilt is she used, as we come around here, she's got some kind of um, wavy looking design. Kind of a filler. Filler, and she used monofilament thread. So you don't see the thread color, and yet the motif that she placed, see how big this motif is that she created? And I'm sure she created that in Art and Stitch and did it with the Pro Stitcher. She quilted that in white thread. So then she's got the white thread out here as this swag border, which who would have thought to, to do what she did here? This is a border going around itself there, around the quilt. And I love how she did that outside. Okay, so this didn't come to her as a scalloped border. And it actually had an extra row on the bottom. So she took that row off and just squared it up and made those motifs and then gorgeous. Yeah, and then she just scalloped it. And then she had to find a binding for it. And so she couldn't find the exact thread color or the exact fabric color. And so to make it work, she placed a white piping and it broke up that binding. And to me, you can't tell it there. Oh, any you different. can't. She did a beautiful job on yeah, it. She yeah. did. And we can even pull that over so you can see how beautiful that's quilted on the back. All white thread in the bobbin, but the monofilament throughout this in the top and then the rest of it was white. So it turned out, this was, this was just the one of my The two colors are just stunning. Yeah, the yeah. white and the blue is just beautiful. Oh, we're back. <laughs> we are. Beautiful quilts. I'm so happy they're hanging at Handy Quilt and that we get to see them every day. They're beautiful. And, you know, they're much, there's a lot of question about whether you should do them or not do them and how, you know, what you use on them. I think one of the questions was about thread and what kinds of thread should you use. And I think between us, we tried just about every thread and just had great success. I don't think there was a thread that. Yes, but I find the more dense quilting then they, uh, the quilters used a finer thread. So right. that it, Same as on a regular quilt. Yeah. yeah. So there were, there were people that used a polyester threads. There were some that used cotton threads. And so I know these are pretty, probably every one of these cotton fabrics, but we put polyester threads in them. Yeah, and they're beautiful. And most of these, I almost think every one of these, we used a layer of 80-20, uh, cotton and polyester and then a layer of wool yeah that was so that you would see the quilting on those yes and they're you know they're they're nice they drape well i don't you know yeah. so uh some of the issues that we talked about today as we see here they some of them were fixed they were taken care of like if they had been washed they were able to clip all of those stray threads off the back there are some issues that could not be fixed and so they embraced the quilt and they quilted it and, yes. and decided, like yeah. had to go to plan B sometimes because the way they embraced right. it to start with didn't right. work. Yeah, and some, as you were quilting, you were like, whoa, I didn't know that was gonna be there because you're not quite, you know. So a lot of things you can take care of ahead of time. And so there was questions about, about marking the quilt. Did you mark your quilt? I did, I just use an air erase, the purple marker and it works. So right. I would say if you're going to mark the quilt, test it in a seam or on the outside quarter inch to make sure that it will come out afterwards yeah. and do some testing beforehand. And if you're going to wash it, I would hand wash it. Don't put it in maybe a front load washer 
where you're, you don't want any agitation. But I would probably put it in a bathtub and wash it that way to so that there's no agitation, yeah. no problems with those seams or and if it's been hand pieced and you know a question was if it's hand pieced and it needs some repair, should I hand repair it with a hand piecing or should I use my machine? You know, it's your quilt. It's really up to you. You get to decide how yeah. you want to yeah. handle this. If you want this to be a showpiece, an authentic, then you probably don't even want a machine quilt it. But we do because we're machine quilters. So these were tops we were able to obtain that were, you know, not priceless, museum quality, not, you know, these were just the fun of quilting them and seeing what happened. I have had people approach me since I did my quilt and say, oh, I have a quilt top, my, you know, that my grandmother left that's never been quilted. And what do you think about that? And, you know, everyone is a different. Each situation. one of them are unique. Right. And you have to decide how you want to handle it. And what does it mean to you? And I think the best thing here is, you know, is it better done so that you're having it? You have that quilt, or you know, do you want to keep saving it for that perfect moment or that perfect yeah. whatever? And I know some people take them and just face it with another piece of fabric and and use it as a tablecloth type, you know, thing. But yeah. you know, it's yeah. nice to have them finished. And uh, the one thing that I felt, and I as I quilt these antique quilts, is I try to almost become one with the Quilter. Now, usually the quilters are passed away because these are antique quilts that are quite old. But I kind of think, what did this quilter do? What? Where did she get this fabric? Was it a? Were Were they all scraps from the fabric that she sewed clothes for her or her children? You know, what was what was going on in her life? And to me, I I actually it, I become more with the quilts. One with the quilt. And so if that's that's something that I've always done as I quilt quilts like that. Is I just want to know what that person was. What's what century was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And what do they think? And what would they think? And yeah, and how would they yeah. have quilted it? And what was you know? So it's kind of fun to do that. And it, then then you can it personalizes it for me. Yeah, because it's yeah. my quilt and her quilt. Yeah. and she's up there looking down on me, hopefully saying, <laughs> "Yeah, you're getting that done." <laughs> So then is better. Then is better. That's right. Well, thank you today for joining us. Um, um, any, like we said, anything that you'd like to, I don't know that we talked a lot about products today, but you can always find your handy quilter um, dealer close to you and find products that will help you get your quilts done. Yeah. Finishing quilts is always the best, the That's most important. Cool. Yes. But finishing and then putting the binding on. <laughs> How many of you out there have quilts that don't have the binding on, but everything else? Are you talking to Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, thanks for joining us today. And I know you can't remember all of this. It's all on our website. And if your questions weren't answered, um, we will get to those. We will answer those individually. and. And I thank you for there's a lot there were a lot of comments made today and thank you for your comments and information so it's fun to see what other people are doing so next month webinar will be on our March 10th and we've got a new topic for you so join us next month and we'll see you later.